Thanks for joining me here on Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I'm your host, Karen Fabian, the founder of Bare Bones Yoga and the creator of the Momentum Magic Method, the way to become a confident teacher who seamlessly shares cues and easily creates sequences, whose classes are transformational, not just transactions, who understands anatomy and who shares their passion in a unique and authentic way. Here on the podcast, you'll hear anatomy lessons, stories from teachers, interviews with others in the field, and a dose of personal growth because having a strong, healthy mindset is such an important piece of being a confident teacher. In addition to the podcast, follow me on Instagram and TikTok for daily videos and teaching topics. And I've got two more ways you can build your confidence and skill. Join me weekly for my mini masterclass and teaching clinic, a 30-minute teacher-only themed yoga class, followed by a teaching lesson. You can just DM me the words masterclass invite, DM me on Instagram, barebonesyoga, and I'll send you the invitation for the next masterclass. And I've also just added a new invitation-only group called the Empowerment Club, an exclusive community for yoga teachers who want to feel confident and make a bigger impact. This is a free group for your first month and then a small membership fee. So you could even just join for the first month for free and try it out. This group will have weekly workshops, private audio lessons just for members, a private Facebook group, and special offers on programs just for members. DM me the words Empowerment Club for your application. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. And let's get into the show. Hi there. Welcome to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. My name is Karen Fabian and I'm your host and this is episode 272. I am recording this on a Tuesday, which is a hardly ever done recording day, but I am just so inspired to share this with you. You are going to hear this on Monday, the 18th of December, 2023. And the reason, you know, I might even, I might even drop this one a little early. So this might actually end up being a bonus episode that I release in the week of the 17th. So you may actually be listening to it sooner than the, um, sooner than the 18th. Anyway, here I am on December 12th, 2023. And the reason I'm so inspired to share this with you is because I just finished pulling this together and I just can't wait to share this with you. It, it, it was so transformational for me to pull it together. And I lived through this. And so I, I can only imagine for you as a first time listener to this story, uh, how it's going to impact you. And I hope it impacts you even one eighth of the amount that it impacted me. So let me give you the backdrop. You know, it's almost the end of the year and I'm doing a whole bunch of things to sort of take a step back and look at the year and just from a lot of different angles. And I bet you probably do this too too in some way. And if we look at this, you know, really through the lens of yoga teaching, I had um, some time over the past few days to take a step back and look at all the teachers that I've worked with this year in my program and what were some of the common ways that they shifted, shifted uh, their beliefs, shifted their skills, all in service to their personal goal, whatever that looked like for them, because my program is 100% one-on-one. So every teacher that comes to me has a different goal. And the one of the wonderful things about my program is I customize it to the teacher. So it's not a cookie cutter approach like the 200 and 300 and 500 hour teacher trainings. It's 100% customized to you. And so I took a look back and... I knew throughout the year I was having all these light bulb moments with these teachers where they were just having these big revelations. They were tapping into their true power. 
they were taking their power back instead of giving it to their students and giving it to their uh, studio owners that they worked for and giving it to the person who trained them and giving it to, you know, people out there on the internet. You know, this is a, a large part of where yoga teachers start to feel so much angst is that they're giving their power away. And I don't mean power in a way like I have power over you. I mean power in the way of feeling empowered. And we can't feel empowered when we feel like there's some entity out there who's telling us what we need to do in our yoga classes. That is not an empowered way of teaching. That is not an empowered way of being. And so everything that I do, the through line through it all is helping you become the most empowered version of yourself. And really, I can look at that through the lens of being a yoga teacher, but it's really about being you because we can't separate at the detail level. It's like the muscle fibers. We can look at a particular muscle at the level of the fibers, but if we zoom out, it is the muscle. And so this is the amazing thing about being a yoga teacher. As we work to being our most empowered teacher, one of the amazing benefits is we become more empowered as a person. And that is another reason why I just absolutely love the work that I do with teachers. So I took a look back uh, the past couple of days through the whole year and looked for common threads, looked for common lessons, looked for common kinds of you know shifts that teachers made. And I pulled it together in just a conversation. Now, of course, you know, you're not speaking to me here because we're on the podcast. Um, you're listening to the podcast. However, I want you to think of it as if it were a conversation, as if we were just sitting in the room together, or maybe you you came to, to see me chat about this, and maybe I was sharing this information, um, sharing these transformations with a whole bunch of teachers, you and a whole bunch of other teachers, and we were just kind of gathered together in, you know, just, I don't know, a coffee house or a comfy place where we were just sitting and chatting. So that's the backdrop. Uh, for the story that I'm going to share with you. And it's really a story about transformation and what is possible for you. And so as you're listening to this, I want you to see if something happens as you're listening to this, if something in you shifts, if something in you shifts in a way that says to you, this is this is something, this is something what I'm listening to here. This is a transformation that I think is possible for me. That seems really like a transformation I want to have myself. So with that, as I was pulling together all this information, looking back at the year ahead, I was reminded of my client, Chloe, who's a yoga teacher who struggled a great deal with her confidence. Chloe would notice her nerves starting to ramp up Sunday night as she anticipated teaching her yoga classes for the week ahead. Is my sequence good enough, she'd think? Maybe I should change it. She'd practice her sequence and rewrite her notes, hoping that would make her feel better. But by the time her first class of the week arrived, she was in full-blown panic. On her drive to the studio, she'd wonder, is all of this worth it? But Chloe is not alone in her struggle as a yoga teacher. Perhaps for you, it shows up as imposter syndrome. I'm not good enough. Or comparison to other teachers. I just took her class and she's so much better than me. Or pressure. It needs to be perfect. And then there's the family member who doesn't get it, such as the husband who can sense you're getting nervous and exclaims exasperated, Honey, it's not like it's brain surgery. What are you so nervous about? What this all comes down to is a crippling confidence problem. And the longer you teach with this lack of confidence, the longer you find yourself asking if it's all worth it. So how might you typically go about solving for this? Maybe you try to feel better by over-preparing. Maybe you create a new sequence every week, believing that the one you already know and have used isn't good enough and your students won't like you if you teach a similar sequence from class to class. You might also practice your cues and write them down while you're doing the sequence, only to find out when you get to the studio, your mind's a blank. 
You then speculate on how it went, attempting to talk yourself out of whatever bad feelings come up. But when that doesn't work, you start to wonder, am I cut out for this? In contrast, imagine walking into the room with a sense of excitement. Imagine greeting your students, sharing a few words about what to expect, and then beginning your class with no notes and not even the urge to put a yoga mat down. Imagine moving through the room, providing instructions, and seeing yourself that they're listening and understanding what you say. Imagine at the end of class, as the end of class nears and the students are resting in the final pose, you feel inspired to share a few words of your own rather than reading from a book. Imagine feeling like you're doing what you were designed to do. But how might this be possible? How might you go from the crippling lack of confidence that Chloe had to this other experience of connection and fulfillment? Yoga teaching is a special kind of role, isn't it? It not only can erode our confidence, it can stir up uncomfortable feelings from a long time ago, such as reminding you of the time you answered a question incorrectly in school. These kinds of memories come back when you start your class, and in many cases, you might not even be aware of it. But what is it about teaching yoga in particular that makes it so raw for so many of us? Unlike other areas of expertise, teaching yoga involves not only instruction, but also public speaking, managing a group, sharing from your own words, and showing up as an expert, teaching a framework that's been around for thousands of years. In today's world, it also involves moving beyond a set of rules, rules given in training to a way of teaching that's instead more authentic to you. Without the ability to build your confidence, all you're left with is believing that you have to do everything you've been told. You write down your script, you build a sequence with a peak pose, you change your sequence every week, you follow all the rules, even though they don't change how you feel. And this erodes your confidence even more. But the simple truth is that students don't come into class for an original sequence or a perfectly delivered script. What they actually want is to have agency over their own experience. This means that even if they're falling all over the place, it's still a win for them because they're in class and they're practicing yoga. Students yearn for essential clear cues and a space where they can find presence and peace. Even in the case of a more advanced student in a class of beginners, they'll fall in line with what's being offered or might add a few variations that inspire them. Students don't need the worry of the teacher. They simply want to be guided with clear cues and maybe a comment or two about how what they're doing can translate to greater health off the mat as well. And yet these beliefs about students wanting original sequences and everything else comes from somewhere, doesn't it? As I worked with Chloe, she began to see that the pressure and dread she was feeling before teaching was coming from a part of her that was telling her she wasn't good enough and she wasn't going to be able to do it right. She described this feeling as overwhelming and it left her feeling like she was at rock bottom. When I explored with her where this negative inner voice came from, she said it reminded her of her father and the things he'd say to her when she was young. She described him as being hard on her and her siblings, and she could hear his voice in her head when she taught. This created inner tension for her because as much as she wanted to teach, her experience was so negative because it reminded her of times as a child when she couldn't meet his expectations. As she taught yoga, she kept repeating this cycle of negative self-talk. Because she had this belief that perfect was the only acceptable outcome, she could never meet this expectation when she taught. The bar of an acceptable class for her was, it has to be perfect as defined by me, not I showed up confidently and authentically. When we work together, she said, I need to change my sequence every week or my students will get bored. How do you know your students will get bored, I asked. 
are people coming up to you and saying, hey, your class is boring? Well, no, she said. And even if someone did, I asked, does that mean every student shares that perspective? Of course not, she said. So what if you just tried teaching the class four weeks in a row to see what happens if it seems people get bored? Is that something you'd be willing to try? I suppose so, she said, maybe if it's just four weeks. And within a couple of weeks of that conversation, everything changed. She found that from week to week, she felt more confident because she wasn't changing her sequence. She was getting better and better at the sequence and the cues. She found that no one came up to her and said that they were bored. And she found that they were actually starting to get a better handle on the sequence from week to week as well. Just by going in and experimenting with this approach, she literally reshaped her belief and she found her footing as a teacher and felt so much more confident. But how did what we discussed wind up having such a profound impact on her? Beliefs often come from what we were told as a child before we even had free will over what to believe. Yoga teachers contend with that as the source, plus all of what they're told in training. Much of how we are trained is based on a guru model where one person trains us and shares their model of teaching. Many teachers give up their own sense of agency to the person who trained them, even going so far as to say, I teach it that way because that's how I was trained. And so imagine you as the teacher wish to implement something new, like having the same basic sequence instead of creating a new one every week. You might then commit yourself to no longer changing up the sequence from now on. But the energy behind a commitment when it comes to behavior change comes from a similar place as willpower. It reinforces a rigid way of thinking, which is exactly what causes so much of the confidence problem. In my conversation with Chloe, we opened the door to other possibilities and approaches. We framed it like a science experiment. The real magic of experimentation comes from using a new approach and evaluating the results. The teacher who believes at an identity level that she's shy and she could never walk around the room and teach, so she hides in her own practice as she teaches, could experiment with walking in the room, greeting the class, and experiment with standing in front of them as she teaches the first three or four poses, even though she's nervous and it feels awkward. With just that one experiment, she starts to loosen her belief around her identity just a little. Starting with that first experiment can then lead to teaching more of the poses from standing, which could then advance to walking around the room. Pretty soon, she's dispelled her rigidly held belief simply by being willing to experiment with a new approach. Chloe and many other teachers have transformed their teaching as they have because your confidence as a yoga teacher comes less from the hours of training you've done and more from your willingness to experiment. I'm gonna say that again. Chloe and many other teachers have transformed their teaching as they have because your confidence as a yoga teacher comes less from the hours of training you've completed and more from your willingness to experiment. It is through trying things but not committing to them that you can shift the beliefs that have kept you in fear. This can take shape in all sorts of ways. For a teacher who believes that inspiration for her students has to come from yoga books and who doesn't think she has anything of value to share with her class, she can experiment with sharing two or three sentences from her own heart at the end of class. A teacher who believes she needs to use music in her classes can experiment with a delay in turning on the music until 10 minutes after class start and turn it off 10 minutes before class ends. A teacher who constantly asks for feedback can experiment with teaching a class where she doesn't ask anyone for feedback afterwards. A teacher who believes that a class is only worth it when it includes harder poses and complex transitions because she sees others teaching like that 
can experiment with teaching a class that focuses on the essentials. There are many examples as well, in addition to the ones I've just shared, but the larger point is that if you're struggling with your confidence and even enjoyment as a yoga teacher, making a rigid commitment to a new way of doing things will most likely just perpetuate the more agonizing aspects of teaching. This could have been the case with Nadia, but she turned things around. Nadia thought that she wasn't the sort of teacher who could prep before class, so she spontaneously came up with the bulk of the sequence once she was there. She also found she was influenced by other teachers and she felt inadequate in comparison. We worked to uncover the belief that prevented her from prepping, which was that she thought her class would be boring. We also talked about the idea of refraining from taking class with teachers who triggered feelings of inadequacy in her, even if it was just for a few weeks. She found another class to attend in her area that didn't trigger feelings of not being as good as another teacher. She also took a little time to write down one of the sequences she was already teaching and found that she actually loved the process of doing it. More importantly, when she used it in her classes, she found it allowed her to walk around more and feel more confident because she didn't have to spend time creating the sequence on the fly. Her confidence grew from there. Your confidence as a yoga teacher comes less from the hours of training you've completed and more from your willingness to experiment. If you show up in your teaching in this way, everything will take shape differently moving forward. So I hope that you have found this insightful and inspiring. I hope through these stories of teachers that I've worked with and the lessons that they've learned and the transformations they've experienced, I hope that this has maybe for you not only provided inspiration, but maybe provided a blueprint of sorts so that you can have faith that there is a way out there for you to shift in the ways that you want. And of course, as you listened to not only the stories of these teachers, but knowing that these stories come from these teachers being in a process of working with me inside my program, in this container where they have at their disposal tools and strategies and approaches that I've designed so that they can experience and could experience the shifts that they did. Know that that process and that program and that offer is out there for you too. And if after listening to this, you feel inspired to find out if you are a good fit for my program, absolutely just send me a DM on Instagram and let me know that you heard this episode and you'd like to find out more about what it's like to be in my program and to work with me so that you can also experience a transformation like this. I thank you so much for being with me for this episode. And I will have more episodes in this year, 2023. But because we are getting close to the end of the year, I'm going to say it now and I'm going to say it again. I am so grateful that we had an opportunity to spend some time together this year here on the podcast. If this is your first episode listening or many, many episodes that you've listened to, I thank you so much for your time, for your focus. And most of all, I thank you so much and I honor you. And I am just so inspired by the work that you are doing as a yoga teacher. As a yoga teacher myself, we share that passion for making an impact on people in a very special and unique way. And I just honor and respect the work you are doing and being out there inspiring other people to greater health and greater presence and greater mindfulness and just greater overall positive beingness. So thank you again for listening. I wish you all the best as this year wraps up this holiday season, as we head into the new year, I wish you nothing 
but goodwill, good opportunity, maybe a sprinkle of luck. And I look forward to connecting with you, not only through the end of this year, 2023, but into next year as well. Thanks so much for listening and namaste. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And as a special thanks, DM me the words podcast offer, and I'll share with you a special opportunity for yoga teachers who are ready to be confident and skilled and drop all that prep time, drop practicing with class, drop using the same cues over and over, and drop worrying what other people think. If this is you and you're ready to step into your most powerful, authentic way of teaching, DM me the words podcast offer on my Instagram, Bare Bones Yoga.